Well, good morning, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic, coming to you from Sholo, Arizona in the high desert, 7,000 feet up here. Uh, first day, we're actually not getting sun, and I kind of need it because, well, we got a little problem going on. I'm trying to work on solving it, but we got a problem. It's been an interesting weekend, uh, but it also showed me that, uh, Eric, you need to be a little bit more prepared because we are offline here at Taterland right now. I'm going to show you why and show you how we've temporarily fixed this situation, but uh, I will be uploading this video with some connected internet. Check out the video description below for unlimited high-speed internet here at Taterland. So my Rododo lithium batteries that survived inside Babe the Blue Box here all winter. 800 amp hours. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd had good luck with them until recently when all of a sudden the whole system just started shutting down and giving me some warnings. Go inside here. Uh, I was talking with uh, another nomad friend that lives out here in the high desert, David from Gone Boondocking, about my batteries and what was going on and just being confused because Sometimes this would say that, you know, we're up there at 55 volts and then all of a sudden it would drop below the threshold out of nowhere. And uh, David had mentioned that uh, it sounds like you have a bad battery or a bad cell in one of your batteries. I thought, well, that doesn't make sense because it works so well sometimes, but uh, I did end up disconnecting, turning off the whole system, um, unparalyzing, paralleling, unparalleling the four Rododo batteries that were right here and and then I tested them individually, charged them one by one at 12 volts instead of the 48 volt system. And sure enough, one of those four Rododo batteries was not even holding a charge. As a matter of fact, while the rest of them would sit at a resting voltage of like 13.7 or something like that, the other battery on there was down at 12.7. So a significant problem and um, Instead of digging into those, I decided to list the other three good batteries that I had while they were still working well. I listed them for sale and had a buyer. In fact, that buyer drove all the way from Prescott, Arizona and took all four batteries. Uh, I then used that money to purchase some new batteries. However, even with Amazon Prime, there is going to be a wait on those batteries and we have no batteries. We are 100% off grid here. However, we're still on grid. Luckily, and the reason that we're still online is because of this bad boy right here. This is a portable power station, but it is a very large power station. As a matter of fact, it holds 5,120 watt hours. It is also a 220 watt uh, inverter power station. And I've got everything here in the shed plugged in, so my security system, my connecting internet, also running the filter on my hot tub and the display up here. Now, granted, we're not getting a whole lot of solar right now, but I'm gonna show you the solar outside in a moment. Input, we're only bringing in 226 watts here on a very cloudy day, and we're asking for just under that 133 total with the hot tub filter plugged in. So this 21% uh, is going up here early in the morning, but I really like this power station. It's got handles on both sides. It's got several DC outlets. It's got USB ports. It's got four AC outlets. And then most importantly, look at that. That's a 30 amp dedicated RV plug. My RV can even plug right into this and it can handle up to a thousand watts of solar. It can charge in just under three hours if you give it the maximum AC input. Or like I said, usually on here, I'm seeing an input solar of between 700 and 800 watts. Let's go outside. You have probably seen these on the ground in several of my videos this past couple weeks as I've been testing out the system, but Alcatel also sent me two pieces of 400 watt portable folding solar panels. So we've got 800 watts here on the ground, and then I've linked those together. Run them in through my little pocket there so that I don't have to bring the power station outside to babe the blue box. And uh, usually we're getting back up to 100% every single day and then starting the night. I'll come back in there and usually it'll be at like 20 or 30% here in the morning as it starts to recharge again. And this plug right here that goes out is currently temporarily keeping the filter going on my hot tub. Or my heated pool. You like my little green walkway that I created here? 
Heck yeah. So we're keeping this going and I've been dunking like crazy just staying cool out here, 73. So it's pool. It's definitely a pool right now, but you know, redundancies. I've also pulled out my champion uh, 4,500 watt generator, which has a plug just like the inverter. I've also got my other inverter 3200 generator by, by Genmax available. But until I get those new batteries, this is completely, I've got everything turned off. Useless right now. Also, I wanna mention, um, we got some wildfires here in the Sholo area. And I don't know if you can see off in the distance, it's, it's not only cloudy, but it's also hazy and smoky. There's several wildfires going on nearby. See, I'm pretty impressed with this uh, power station. It's got a big wheel on there, so you can come over here and you can pull out this handle here on the bottom, like that, or like that, pick it up, and you can tote it around. Right now I can't because it's plugged into the uh, solar on the outside, right there, solar input coming in from the wall right there. But there's no reason you couldn't just pick this up and put it in the back of your car or your tracker truck and uh, take it camping with you. The cords fit on top here, your solar DC and AC cords. So that's kind of nice. It tells me that under the current settings with the amount of solar coming in right now and my output that I am good for about 39, 40 hours like this. But usually it's sunnier today. Today is just, I am definitely putting a strain on this Ocotel power station being as we're completely offline right now with my main system, but it is getting me by. Uh, it's not too hot right now, but I can't plug the RV into the 30 amp cord here for air conditioning. So uh, that again, that's why the pool's handy and we're gonna get through this. Like I said, probably by Wednesday or Thursday, I'll get those batteries. We'll get them back hooked up and then we'll use the Ocotel again as a backup emergency or RV help, stuff like that. Um, but I'll put a link in the video description. There's that sunshine. If you guys are looking for something portable you can carry around with, that you don't need a separate standalone system. And, and these panels fold up really nice. Um, so you can hear Danny running his generator over there. Ooh, there's that sunshine. Okay, cool. Not those panels, but those panels are work. So guys, be well. I got a lot of projects going on. One big one on the other side of the camera over there, but uh, you gotta wait. I'm busting my butt here. I will get back to you in two days. On Wednesday, I will be back and we got some more Taterland homestead projects going on. You guys be well. Opie and Taran, I'll see you soon, bye-bye.